Hello friends, good morning. Welcome to Astra. This is Dhanunjay Reddy bringing you the daily current updates for UPSC for prelims as well as for mains. This will be a quick revision of what is there for uh, today from the Hindu. Please allow me to share the screen. So this is the thing that we have uh, in today's uh, current updates, uh, the Hindu. 9th of uh, March 2023. Let's quickly discuss about uh, this is the college that I have made for you guys for today. Uh, in this you will find what are the things that you have particularly in today's Hindu newspaper. Let me start with the things that we have. So in the front page there is some news saying that obviously after the elections of Nagaland, Meghalaya and Tripura elections have been zoning in and this is again relating to that that is called Manik Shaha has become the Prime Minister, Chief Minister of Tripura and Prime Minister has attended the inaugural session of the oath taking ceremony of this man. So obviously they are the members of BJP hence Prime Minister is flying to the so called uh, Agartala and giving his support for the newly elected government there. Money laundering laws will now cover cryptocurrency trade. Now. Uh, under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, Ministry of Finance has said that they are now going to cover cryptocurrencies also under money laundering. This is very important. The exchange of virtual digital assets and fiat currencies, forms and such as forms of virtual digital assets and transfer of digital assets can also be coming under money laundering in order to prevent the so-called um, something like these work as Ponzi schemes as a result cryptocurrencies trading is not allowed in India. This is previous year prelims question. Cryptocurrencies is not regulated by RBI. They are not allowed in India to have that. Right. So they are coming under money laundering. So these are the two things that you have in the print page. And then police facilitating politicians to escape loss says the so-called uh, Karnataka High Court in the cognizable offense where they have to take the so-called the help of uh, the magistrate police is not taking the help of magistrate there. So let's have a look at, uh, they have used two terms here, that is what important, cognizable offence, non-cognizable. Cognizable offence is in red, non-cognizable offence is in green. What is cogniz cognizable? Cognizable means that can be seen, that can be perceived, that can be reflected. So police officer may arrest without warrant. In cognizable offences, police can arrest without warrant. In non-cognizable offence, police cannot arrest without warrant. Nature of offence is very serious in cognizable offence. Nature of offence is not much serious. FIRs can be registered without magistrate permission in cognizable offence. FIRs cannot be registered without magistrate permission. Now this is under consideration. For non-cognizable offence, magistrate permission is required to file FIRs but they are not taking uh, the magistrate permission. That is what the High Court of Karnataka has said recently. Uh, that is the context. Now, why, uh, what happens if you are not taking the permission of magistrate to fill FIRs? Then obviously the FIRs can be filled at the discretion of the police officers and sometimes police officers may facilitate uh, some VIPs or someone who is uh, near and dear to them to escape from the law. So in that cases, what uh, High Court of, particularly in the election related cases, which is non-cognizable offences, they have to take the help of uh, the so-called uh, magistrate to register the cases or FIRs but that is not being done hence High Court of Karnataka has said that the police officers should be trained properly to follow the procedure established as per law. So this is what the context is. NASA hands over Nisar satellite to ISRO. Nisar satellite is developed by NASA and ISRO. What is this Nisar satellite? Nisar is low earth observation satellite. It is being uh, carried to India back. So it is low earth observation satellite and we know what are the functions of earth observation satellite. Earth observation satellite will carry out the so called uh, observing the earth that is for vegetation, biomass, sea level rise, groundwater, natural hazards like earthquakes, volcanoes and landslides. These are the advantages of uh, uh, the so called earth observation satellites and NISAR is one earth observation satellite and that is being deployed here. That is what the context is. And NISAR carries two dual band synthetic aperture radars. Now radars are used to um, know what exactly is present in a particular area. They are reflect, they will send a signal and they will reflect back 
and through that reflection they will come to know what is present there hence in every remote sensing satellites uh, the so called uh, radars are used and here they are using highly advanced radars such as l and s band synthetic aperture radars which can have higher sweep higher sweep means the more the sweep the more they can cover the more they can give the information so nizar is an advanced uh, Earth observation satellite. Now it is developed by ISRO as well as NASA. After developing this flight, is carrying that satellite back to India. This is what uh, the development is. So two things there. Now in the editorial page, um, one article was written by former CBI director R K Raghavan. Now this is not uh, exclusively for UPSC. This is just for understanding for normal man. Now whether CBI recently after the arrest of Manish Shishoda in um, Delhi. There were many allegations of the CBI saying that CBI is used as a tool uh, by the central agencies or by the union government to harass the so-called political party members. In that context, he has written whether CBI can be used or arrest can be made um, to take revenge on some political party members or not. And he's uh, of the opinion. Obviously, many people will think that um, if there is the uh, some agency under one's control, they can disappropriately use the force. But this is not the thing that he is telling. Whenever you are going to arrest a person, they have to follow the law, and without following a law, no central agency without a strong evidence can arrest any person. If they are arrest arresting a high-profile candidate, if they are calling high-profile candidates into their uh, uh, ring, then definitely that means they have some vital inputs, vital leads that made that man to go ahead. So this is telling that yes, up to times uh, the central government may use. in their partition but however the officers cannot go and register the cases as people are thinking yes they will hand over the cases now these cases will be handled in a systematic procedure in the due process of law as far as this is considered who he is supporting the how cbi can do it obviously this is some substantial argument so people will just think that central agencies go and arrest everyone but this is not the case in general so no need to read into that depth Budget 2023, a case of education taking a hit. Now, this is a comparison about budget 2023. How allocations are made for union uh, uh, education as well as state education here. Now, he has compiled with uh, much data. And data is not important. Why I have said this is, you can have some major educational policies that government of India has. Yes, though there is no substantial improvement. improvements in budget allocations for education as per this article right so you can know when you read this article you can come to know what are the various schemes that are available for higher school education uh, what are the schemes that are available under education for r and d from this so if you are interested you can read it but again i didn't find any much relevant information as far as this is considered challenges of change this is coming from iran Iran must opt for reforms and freedoms, especially for its women. Recently, it is uh, known that out of uh, the so-called 31 provinces in the Iran, 25 provinces have reported poisoning of uh, food uh, when in the girls, you know, girls schools. Now, why girls schools are targeted in Iran? That is the question. Because unlike Afghanistan, which is under Taliban rule, Iran never had a history of disallowing its women to enter into universities, and Uh, uh, surprisingly, in Iran, in the last one decade, it is the woman who is dominating in attendance as far as to the men is considered. Hence, why did even in the year 1971, when the Iran Revolution was going, or when the Iran Revolution is happening, there was no stringent norms violating or suppressing the women. But after the regime has changed, after the regime has changed since 1979, there was some. Um, limitations that is being kept on the women particularly in the religious domain such is such as they are making the women to go forcibly under the tenets of religion that is what it is being spoken but if you look post 1979 education was never neglected as far as women sections are considered in iran for example world bank data says that the literacy rose from 26% in 1979 or 76 to 85% in 2021 this clearly shows that there was no a uh, ban on school education or university education on women but what is the ban the ban is targeting the so called on religious tenets that people should wear the scarf they should follow the, the dress code or else the police is going to impose you morality all these things is making the iran government to go 
are the Iranian citizens to go against protests. So Iran has to go and accept the challenge. What is the accept the challenge? Challenge for change. It should treat both for everyone equally. The mullahs there has to be ready to embrace an egalitarian society where women and men will have equal powers. That is what it is being said. Where you can write this paragraphs, you can write it in essay writing or ethics. Apart from that, not much relevance. Saha in the saddle, this is about uh, Malik Shah becoming the chief minister of Tripura. In this context, they are telling that what are the problems that you have in Tripura. So the problems in Tripura as such, we have seen the problems in Meghalaya recently. What is the problems in Tripura? So first one is immediately after the election results were announced, so there is some uh, political violences that has happened, violences that has broke out post election results were announced. So that has to be calmed down immediately. The second one is there is a deepening divide between the tribal population and non tribal population with the emergence of the so called Tripra Mocha, who has demanded for greater Tripra land, a land which is separate from the so called Tripura. Now, this is clearly showing that tribals versus non tribals conflict is emerging and demands for a new state is emerging there. Hence, the chief minister has to collaborate with tribals and non tribals and they have to ensure that there is developmental activities happening there. The third one is the demographic changes is also uh, creating some problem of marginalization of indigenous communities which are present in Tripura right from the beginning. And the fourth one is the displaced migrants that is called blue communities who have migrated from Mijoram to Tripura. Even these communities are given enfranchisement recently that is they were allowed to vote. But this is called making non-tribals to be given uh, voting power itself indicates that they are making as the inhabitants of the state. So this is creating a trouble between the tribes and non-tribes, the original inhabitants and the so-called migrated sections of the community. Now, the chief minister of Tripura really has a good, great task to go ahead. Yes, he has won the elections, he has come to the power, he has much challenges like um, arresting the post-poll violence, uh, the second one is uh, bridging the gaps between the tribals and non-tribals, uh, assuring uh, some developmental activities in greater Tripura land, otherwise they are going to ask for a separate state. The fourth one is um, tackling the problem of integrant, uh, internal migrants such as blue migrants who have visited from Meghalaya, Mizoram. So these are the things that you have as far as Tripura is considered. So what is prelims question? Prelims question can be this. Brew communities have been displaced from which area to which area? They were replaced from or they were migrated from Mizoram to Tripura. That is the thing. So these are the things that is present in Meghalaya and Tripura. Meghalaya we have seen yesterday and Tripura we have seen today. The case to promote border tourism. Again, not much relevant information. Just one thing in order to promote social security or in order to protect our borders. Recently, the chief of defense staff has said that we have to repopulate our border areas with population unoccupied lands along the border areas has to be repopulated then these people are going to act as eyes and ears for the security forces in this uh, domain government of india has also launched a vibrant um, villages program in order to rebuild the infrastructure along the border areas of the country and in order to ensure that the border areas are secure for that thing india is government is going to tackle this issue. In that issue, he has written how we can develop tourism. So not, uh, don't go into this depth, but in geography, they might ask some questions. What are the questions? Pangong Lake is located in which place? It is located in Ladakh. That is one prelims question. Changthang Wildlife Sanctuary is present where? It is a wildlife sanctuary, which is uh, a paradise for bird watchers, thriving population of Kiang. So Changthang has Kiang. They might ask this, Kiang is, what is Kiang? It is a wild ass present in Ladakh area. And then Demchok Lake is famous for hot springs. This is called prelims question. Demchok area is famous for hot springs. The fourth one is Manapas in Chamoli. Uttarakhand is one of the highest vehicle accessible. So Manapas is present in Chamoli. This is fifth question. Badrinath Shrine is present in Uttarakhand. We all know that. Niti Valley. And Mana Valley is present in Uttarakhand. This can be another prelims question. And then Dokla is present in Sikkim. Seventh question. Next one is La Pass, Bamla is present in Arunachal Pradesh. 
So this can be the potential questions that they can ask as far as the passes are considered in the northern part of the country. So in this context, you can just have a quick revision so that you will get an input whenever or you will get some insights to remember these passes whenever you are studying for geography in this context. Small debris orbiting Earth poses a threat to space assets. Now this is about space junk or the debris that is present particularly in the lower Earth orbit. So in this context, what you have to remember only two things. Recently, ISRO has carried out a controlled re-entry of decommissioned Megatropics 1 satellite. So Megatropics 1 satellite was brought back after this, after it was decommissioned. Now this clearly indicates that India wants to reduce the space junk that it is being contributed. So if you look at the space junk, recently US Space Command has released eight tenants of responsible behavior in the space. In that eight tenants, one tenant is satellites which have reached their end life, they have to be brought back and debris has to be removed. This is again USA is also focusing on reducing the space debris. Space debris. What does it indicate? It indicates that in the global problems such as the outer space, it is the responsibility of each and every nation who is sending their satellites to bring back their satellites once their uh, lifetime is over. Now this is going to reduce uh, the space junk and it is going to make outer space available freely for everyone. Now, what is the data that it shows that space junk is increasing? Recently, in the year 2022, 2020 and 2021, if you look at how many satellites were launched, particularly SpaceX, the private space agency, which is uh, which has launched many satellites into the lower Earth orbit for providing internet facilities, space junk has been increasing. For example, in the year 2022, 2160 objects were launched. Just remember 2150 for your understanding. So you have to write this data. In 2022, 2150 satellites were launched. It is um, almost 2850 in 2021 and 900 more than 2000. So this is the space junk data that you can write in answer writing. What is space junk? The junk that is created on the outer space in the lower earth orbit which is who, which has decommissioned. Now the satellites are not functioning. You have to get back their satellites. That is called space junk. We do not have much news. Assam and Maharashtra arrive at a plan to promote tourism. Maharashtra and Assam said that Assam is the best destination for making films. So they have tied up into an MOU so that both the, nation, both the states will be cooperative in developing tourism. This can be taken as example to promote culture in the country. Some bad news coming from Pakistan. Pakistan police uses tear gas, water cannons on Imran Khan's rally. So every day Pakistan is in the news for some bad things. Sabotage on Nord Stream pipeline is not our activity says Ukraine Prime Minister or President. Now, Nord Stream Pipeline is the gas pipeline which is carrying gas from Russia to European Union countries. Now, when the war has emerged, this pipeline was damaged or destructed, creating some trouble to Russia. So Ukraine says that it is not we who have damaged it. Obviously, it is the Western countries who have done. If not Ukraine, some other NATO members must have done it. So let's, that is the thing which is going to happen. Next one is, uh, this is what you have in the text and context space. Uh, they have given some news about autism. What is autism? Student not interested, a child not interested in the so-called uh, regular activities of other children. He will be in his own uh, mind. He will be in his own state. This is called autism. Autism is a neurodysological problem, neurodevelopmental condition, but it is not a disease. So developmental of neurons are not happening in the human brain of the child. As a result, these problems are emerging. Hence, it is very necessary to rectify this, to correct it at the very early stages of life. People think that this is not a problem, but once you realize it, you have to immediately take action because if you are taking action at a very early age, autism can be overcome. Will artificial intelligence lead to job displacements? Here, there are two terms that they have used. Artificial intelligence is normally compromised of, comprised of two things. One is artificial general intelligence, artificial narrow intelligence. What is general intelligence and narrow intelligence? General intelligence is developed, designed to develop and perform wide varieties of intellectual tasks. General means wide, narrow means a single task. So maybe AGIs might replace the existing jobs, but however, any destructive technology, if it is displacing the jobs, it is also giving new jobs. That is the thing that we have to understand. So artificial intelligence can lead to displacement of some jobs. 
but disruptive technology also creates some new jobs and new skill sets so you just you have to have that skill sets then definitely your job will be secure that is what it is speaking among entire hindu newspaper the best article today and the must read article today is the different phases of indian women movement and where it stands now everyone has to read this guys in the hard copy it will not be there it is in the soft copy i am sharing this in our telegram channel um, you can also download the link of this newspaper in the description box that is given below this uh, youtube now what is the say how women's movement in india has transformed from the so called pre independence era in the during the times of national movement to the so called post independent era so the author says that there were three distinct phases of indian movement women's movement uh, in india the first one is during the times of national movement for example if we take civil disobedience movement uh, many people were arrested many women were arrested they have come to the forefront despite the various family backgrounds they have come to the background they have supported the so called indian national army they have supported indian mass movement as a result india has got independence hence women has played a very crucial role in the pre independence era in order to liberate the country from the clutches of the british now as the women has come out to take part in the national movement it has laid down some steps for the political rights for women even after independence so that momentum that was laid by our ancestral women have played a very crucial role in developing some political rights for the women as far as post independence is considered hence post independence political rights are reflections of our past that is in the ancient in our previous times then indian women have also played a very crucial role as far as environmental activities are considered for example in the chipko movement one of the earliest eco feminist movements it is india who has shown light for the world that women can save the ecosystems particularly the environmental aspects chipko movement the second one is recent cases like nirbhaya case like um, the so called shaheen bagh case shabari mala protests are some of the things this clearly indicates that women are coming to the forefront however the problem is whether political parties are due and duly taking advantage of this women's organizations or not right so if you look at uh, women's uh, things the first one is uh, civil they are asking for political rights political rights have been slowly slowly disseminated right from the times of pre independence era the second one that they are asking is they are asking for something called uh, even in the political rights if you see they have they have been assured one third reservations in the 73rd constitutional amendment and 74th constitutional amendment particularly in our panchayats and municipalities so this is the first phase political domain the second one is on the rights they are now asking for the rights what rights they are asking social rights they are asking for economic rights so as far as social rights is considered and economic rights are considered how uh, women rights are being carried particularly in the economic rights rather than the women movement it is the government which has played a very crucial role in developing some women rights take for example the self help groups self help groups are the so called credit lending institutions to the members who are coming together and in india you have around 1.2 crore self help groups each group will be consisting around 5 to 10 members which means around 112 crore indians or women are present in the self help groups so self help groups have played a very crucial role in developing the so called state led organization for women empowerment in economic terms so political empowerment economic empowerment is also going to have a very good thing however what is the problem with the self help groups is many women are just uh, looking at micro credit they are just looking at the so called small scale industries they are not enlarging themselves because of the lack of skill development because of the lack of vocational skills and entrepreneurial skills hence government of india should focus on all these things so that self help groups can become in great hope for indian women to empower them economically particularly uh, the other government schemes such as mahila samakya or uh, self help groups or national rural livelihood missions everything has played a very good role in developing the so called uh, women in india they have played a very crucial role the last aspect is at times women organizations are used for political enrichments by some political parties in some states for example in the construction of a women wall during shabari mala protest cpi has used uh, the ruling party has used women's support and these are the women who were standing this what it says is if there is no political interference if women were given a free hand definitely the women uh, indian women movements is going to be shining 
as usual as it has changed right from the past. So a very important article for general studies students, PSAR students, political science and international relations optional students have to read this because you have a separate topic called role of women and women's movements in organizations. Even GS has it. So please go through this article. Thanks for joining guys. This is the current affairs that we have. We'll meet you soon.